Hi good people, it's your girl Zendomo here on Inspire and Give Hope Show. Welcome guys, if you have already subscribed to my YouTube channel, thank you, thank you so much. If you are yet to kindly hit the subscribe button so you that you are not left behind as I start my story. So guys, um, today uh, I'm happy, I'm a bit relaxed and I'm ready to share my story with you guys so on inspire and give hope show today we are focusing on my story and this is my story so who is jendongo jendongo is a third born in a family of five i was born in in a, a, a very good family setup of a father and a mother and my siblings um we have three girls, two boys. Uh, I was born in Joro. Uh, that's where I was born. And we grew up just like any other child, uh, whereby we went to school just like any other child. We, we were, let me say that, to look average family setup. We never lacked anything. My dad and my mom really worked hard so that we can get all that we needed for to make us comfortable so to kind of feel just like any other child uh nikamaliza class eight and um as we are growing up things were okay uh, me and my siblings were okay actually we were five but we are brought up as six in our family because we had one of my cousin with us and it was one happy loving family despite the challenges here and there just for the normal the normal family the normal family challenges. So after Kumaliza class eight, I performed so well. And um, before I went to school, I remember that is when now my life started taking a new turn. And um, I was introduced to alcohol at a very tender age. Uh, I remember when I was after class eight, there's uh, a very close relative of mine. They used to come at our home. And uh, because they were still very young, they were very very vibrant, they, they were party people. Now, because in the Asiulis, wameenda wapi, wanatoka wapi, wamechelewa wapi, I'll be tagged along. As a, mtasema mimi ni kama deni likuanga waku watetea. I was tagged along, na ilikuwa wakiwa na mimi, nobody will question them, na wata julikana tu wametoka mali pabaya, ama walikuwa nafanya kitu mbaya. So that is how I was introduced to alcohol, because they'll go party. And in the process of partying, nitona chenye wanafanya. And I remember that is the time I was introduced to alcohol because I'll be given kidogo kidogo onja nini 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 nini. And because I was still young and I was very, I was experimenting. I wanted to experiment this life and I could see how happy they were when they were dancing. dancing. So I will take kidogo kidogo and then we'll go home very late at night. And uh, I remember that how kwa naulizo sana. So guys, that's how I was introduced to alcohol at a very tender age. Little did I know that it is going to mess my life in another big way. I didn't imagine that it is going to be the cause of my dilemmas and my problems in my life as I was growing. So after that class 8, Nikaingia high school, uh, I was taken to Lekipia. That is uh, like if you know, when you are in the high school, na my dad, na ni kasome uko up to the fourth form. But I remember during holidays, now that I was introduced to happy life, uh, the alcohol and all that, during the holiday, na kumbuka kuna vitu tuko tunaitaga jam session. So na kuru people, they know about the jam session. They, there were two major joints that used to go to jam session in the was it it was in 2000s 90s 1990s and 2000 uko there were two joints that were very 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 famous in akuru that took out to daga happy so uh, during a uh, school holiday to go to daga on sunday especially it was it used to be on friday saturday and sunday but as we used to go on sunday whereby to tambia wazazi tumeenda church tumerudi church for a practice ama fellowship and then we'll carry some change of clothes in our bags tukifika kule tuna change so nakuru people they know about the two joints 
they don't know to mention the names of the two joints of those sizes zilisha but there are two major joints whereby we, we used to go for jam session tunapigo stamp and then we'll go home around 6 ikifika tunaanza kuvurutana yeye twendeni twendeni unaendea huyu by the time unakujua mwingine mwingine amerudi ndani acha nikatafuta yani like it used to be a struggle from 6 and then we'll end up reaching home at 8 mnaulizo umetoka wapi so in the process tunasema tuko tuna drop fulani tuna drop fulani but in real sense uko unapata wewe umeingia kuita huyu huyu anatoka unamwambia simama hapo no stoke and then anakuambia nilirudi kuita fulani so guys that's how we grew up eh tukaanza kwenda hizo jam session little did I know that it was getting so much into me and then after high school i performed so well and uh, i got a place in a certain college in Nairobi and my dad and my mom really dedicated themselves to taking me there and they ensured that i was at school at uh, all the time hakuna siku nilifukuzi school fees hakuna siku nililack anything they were so so much dedicated to seeing that i make it in life so guys going to call to college and i think uh, let me mention that going to college it is good having to talk to your child ama unaongelesha your sister or your brother because in college and this a uh, university setup unapata there so much so much freedom ukona a lot of freedom in your hands ukona money umepatiwa pesa sasa a lot of money and you are now the one to manage your money so you may think that you have a lot of money you have a lot of freedom so you can do whatever that you want so mimi nikafika college uh, the first uh, term or semester ilikuwa poa tukangangana tukangangana come second one no this is where the peer group came so you find that kuna ile group mabishi wenye ushaanza kupatana na hao pia wameanza ku experiment so many things like when wakati nilienda i really toned down i didn't want them to understand to know that uh, somehow somehow i'm into alcohol but come second term sasa ndio nikapatana na marafiki and these friends of mine you will find that some of us uh, or some of them or some of let's say cc tuko tunafanya ile just to fit in of which now hiyo ndio napatanga so many people fall into bad things uh, into substance use and drugs and all that so as it was about fitting in so we started doing drugs uko na time uko na pesa and then i was in a business course and i remember that time uh, for business course people used to be told that you are just being around tuko tu tuko tu when it comes to strike ni sisi when it comes to disco kuna zile disco ziko zinaorganizwa once a term or every month once a month uh, per term so sisi ndio tulikuanga kule the, te the technical courses zilikuwa a bit tough hapo anga na all that time to party and all that so business people we are the people who are now rocking rocking all, all over si ndio tuko tunajua joint mpi imefunguliwa and all that so guys ikafika mahali where I was in college uh, now we will drink like seriously I remember I used to have friends. I used to I, I, okay, previously how my alcoholism started, yangu nilikuwa na kunywanga ile ya friends, ile ya mabeshti, ile tumekutana mabeshti na we need to drink, like ile the social drinking. It started like yes, like the social drinking. And then the social drinking ikapungua ikakuanga. Sasa okay, we used to say that social drinking used to start on Friday, Saturday. Saturday, Sunday you rest because of Monday. No, it reached a point it, no long, it was no longer a social drinking. Ika kwa sasa, unanza sasa time when you started, you start becoming social with yourself. So with or without friends, you are on a social drinking with yourself. So I, I, I don't know. So unapata, ato ye mwenyewe, it's on a weekday, it's on a Monday, but you are there out drinking. And then, don't forget you have classes to attend, you have exams to do. But Somehow, somehow we used to manage, we used to attend the classes, we used to do the exams, and by the way, I was so bright only that I was confused. So guys, to can live on a college life, partying, partying, like in every estate around the school, I had friends. I had a group of friends here, I had a group of friends here, I had a group of friends here. I had a group of friends like in each and every town. So you'll find that most of them unasikelewa wana nipigia simu, hey wambu, where are you, 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 and I'll be very excited by them because they understand I'm a student, so I'll just go and have part, uh, and party with them. So that is how it started. And you find that you find when you are into alcoholism or when you're into drugs somehow somehow you'll find your you'll find friends to maintain your 
you will find friends to maintain your lifestyle. Unapata, yes, you don't have money, but you have people who are going to help you maintain that lifestyle of drinking like Monday to Monday. By the way, I used to take it like weekends and then it reached a point now it was Monday to Monday. And they had friends who could help me to maintain that kind of a lifestyle. And guys, I can tell you that um, it was not an easy life. It was, by that time, I think we felt that we are on top of the world. It was the best life like una imagine at watu wengine wanabaki shule wao natoka so guys it was it was a life that come to think of it right now i think if, if we it's normally say that if only i can turn back the hand of time i think i can amend amend so so many things so guys tukoenda hivyo college life tukakunywa 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 like we we really 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 drank alcohol in my college life now in 2011 i finished my college by the joined my college in 2009 so in 2011 nikamaliza college and uh, by good luck by god's mercy nikapata job in 2012 april so on april nika report job mwanzo wa april i did my work uh, actually niliandikwa kwanza kwa commission so you see now i have another reason not to go back to home now I can maintain in Nairobi jo nimepata ka job so nikaka Nairobi nikapata job and in April nikaanza job yangu in a certain circle so nikafanya job nikafanya job that April i remember my first salary what did i buy i think i bought a bed yeah because wakati nimaliza shule ah uh, nilianzia maisha chini i think that hiyo ndio kila mtu tu ufanye yani as in many people starts from zero so nika buy bed my second salary that was in may nika buy gas and some few things because it was good money and now come i remember it was one friday yeah it was one friday we were from launching a branch another branch of where i was employed in another town So after launching the branch my friends this who the, my friends who are maintaining mm, for me this lifestyle they called and asked me hey, wambu where are you nikamwambia niko job so akaniambia where which side nikawaambia wakakuja they came they came and picked me up so actually nitoroka kabla tumalize ku launch tukatoka hapo we went into a nearby center in ito kino tukaenda into a nearby center we took some alcohol there and then they were like no 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 you guys joined in Nairobi west and i was like no 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 guys so this is the beginning now guys as i'm i'm narrating this this is the beginning of where now my trouble my problem started from so umesikia all the way from uh, primary nikakuja high school bado tu nimeintroduce kwa pombe come to call uh, after nimemaliza college now i'm working but i'm still remember i'm still maintaining these friends why because i'm still in the same locality where i got them i've not moved places i'm still at the same place where that where my lifestyle has been well perfectly maintained so i thought So guys uh, it was now in uh, first June I remember now that time we were launching now the branch tukakuja well, they came and picked me up we went to somewhere in Keno we took took some alcohol and then one of them suggested that we better go to Nairobi West there is some was it Congolese or something kuna Congolese uh, people who are singing there we can go and uh, and watch them so personally uh, ahead By the guys kuna kitu inaitwa intuitions kuna kale tu ka instinct kana kuambia anga no 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 don't do it don't go don't say so that day mimi nikaenda kwanza kwa nyumba ku change i had my shirt shirt ya job so nikaambia i can't go with it wacha nifikie kwa nyumba ni change and they waited for me at the highway nikaenda nika change shirt ya job sisi hao mpaka tao so guys we went to Nairobi town eh tukafika utali road or, or i think it's utali avenue and then uh, i'm usually asthmatic so that time i could tell that things are not okay i could tell that i'm in danger that i should go back 
that I should not proceed with them, that I should not go to that place. Yani something was really, really, really warning me. And I was like, guys, so that time uh, I told them that I've not carried my medicine. I need to, get, to go and get something to unblock me. So, nikawambia wanishukishe wakaambia no let us take you to a nearby chemist nikamwambia no nyinyi nishukisheni let me go mkae hapa ninawakuta and i remember guys i walked all the way to audion i walked at night nikaenda mpaka audion na nikaingia kwa starbucks for those who know starbucks na nikaketi chini like i'm going back home and i switched off my phone Something was telling me, just go back, just go back, Wampo, just go back, go back, go back, don't proceed with the journey. So many cafe customers, I switched off my phone so that they don't look, uh, they don't look for me. Nani kaka kwa gari. Immediately the car started moving. I was like, oh God, mabishitizangu watani bebaji. How will they carry me? Watani bebaji ati nina utoi, nina ufala. Like, what will people say? What will my friends say when they realize that ni mawatoka? So guys, because I was a bit tipsy, mi mwenye ni kajambia, ah, wacha tu nishuke, kaa mbaya mbaya. Nikashuka, I switched on my phone and I found that they had really tried to call me and then it's like, you know, they were giving up, they wanted to leave me. Nikambia pana, ah, ni chemist nikuwa natafuta, nimepata chemist, mefungo ni nikuwa natafuta, but nimepata finally, I'm on my way coming back. And I remember a lighting from that matatu, the makanga told me, we msijana ujatosheka na pombe. Suingia kwa gari tuende home. Anda nikamwambia wewe kwa ni pesa yako ni ngapi? Akaambia ni 50 bob. Nikamwambia 50 yes sawa chukua. I paid the bus but I, was, I didn't use it. So nikarudi kwa marafiki zangu. Na nikaingia kwa gari. And we proceeded to Nairobi West. So guys we reached there and I remember uh, the drinks were were ordered. So much food and I remember it was chicken. But I remember I didn't touch food, neither my alcohol. It was opened, yes. But I don't remember sipping anything. Now I became so anxious, so restless. I became so sad, so irritated. And I was like, no, 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 no. Something is not right. And I could tell something is not right, but I could not tap it. So my instincts is ikendelea kunisumbua kabisa. And ika nisumbua kabisa. Ika nisumbua and I was like, no, what is this? So I remember ika fika around uh, three, some few minutes to 3 a.m. And then I told them, uh, there is a joint near my home that has very nice music. So my plan was, they will go near my home. Nikifika huko, ni watoke sasa hapo from my joint going to my house was a walking distance. So I wanted to kishafika hapo ni watoke. So and I managed to convince them that it's late. Let's go back to uh, to say it's a home. Karibu sasa nikambia kuna loko yangu. It's very poor. Shiko poor. Ikona music poor. Na by this size na shika juni reggae. So finally I convinced them and wakanembia okay sawa. And I was really happy by the way. And I got relaxed. Nika relaxed and I was like yeah, I have managed so guys, tukaingia kwa gari. I remember nilika kwa passenger seat. The driver is here. I'm on the passenger seat. Na because I was still not feeling okay. I didn't know what I was feeling. Niliangusha kakiti ya pombele and I told them. Eh, tukifika round about ya uthiru. Let me know so that I wake up. Nua direct nionyeshe penye my local is. And that is exactly what I did. Nikaangusha kiti. And by the way, I passed out. Nikalala. Now, na nikalala na nikakua relaxed. Only for me to wake up two hours later. Because I remember it, I remember it was around 3, 3.30, 3.20 up. And I remember waking up around 5 something. Because I checked my phone. And what woke me up, it's a lot of pain. I was in so, so much pain. And I didn't know what has happened. And I remember when I opened my eyes, I could see people pulling me from somewhere. I didn't understand what they were doing. I didn't understand where they are pulling me to or where to from where. And I asked them, I, 
police and I was like muna nivuruta kwa nini and then people said ako uhai ako uhai etu mvututu mtweni she's alive she's alive and I was like you guys what are you telling me she's alive she's alive to mtweni one guy told me that you have had a road accident and uh, we are trying to save you I told I asked him how wakambia we madam nyamaza tu hivyo tutakusave so i remember wakini vuruta i was feeling so much pain and i remember they were pulling me as they pull me i pass out i regain my conscious i pass out i regain my conscious until now i could not take the pain anymore <laughs> I told them to stop. I told them niachane ni sasa leave me leave me alone. Nitajitoa because ana feel uchungu. And I could not understand. Siko na jua tuko wapi? Siko naona anything. I could not see anyone. I could not even figure out that our car was right off. I was not seeing the damage in the car. Somehow somehow I think I was still tipsy wakaniachilia na wakasema amesema atajitoa and i remember squeezing myself putting my hands like this squeezing myself like this until i was able to unstuck myself where i was stuck and i pulled myself to the back seat and they said she has managed I, i had them say ametoboa she has managed amejiokoa nikatoka ndani ya gari wabili wakanishikilia and uh, when walinishikilia like this nikasimama but i realized i could only stand on one leg wakanishikilia mgu moja ndio inakanyaka chini the other one was not stepping down and i remember telling them that my leg I can't feel my other leg and it's not stepping down. I wonder what it is. Put me down near chilieni nisimame. And immediately they could leave me alone. I could fall. And then they said that tutamwachilia huyu mguu yake moja ni kama imearibika. I remember telling them that I feel like going to the washroom nasikia kujisaidia haja ndogo and they helped me to remove my trouser but i tried to go to you to go for a short call i was not able and i was really 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 pressed but i was not able to go for a short call that is when now um, they took me i came not to understand that we had a road accident around nakumat junction for manakumat and i remember now i came to understand now I, we have had a road accident and apparently in the whole vehicle i'm the only person who is hurt now akaniaka so i came to learn that those were taxi guys because i had them talk to the policeman who was on duty who was called from mudangari and he told them that they can help me to take me to the hospital wakaniaka on their back seat the taxi guys i think there were two I know some people that you are with wakanipeleka Nairobi hospital on reaching there they just looked at me they said that she so so much hurt we cannot attend to her she better be rushed to Kenyatta the only thing we can by that time I was screaming i was in a lot a lot of pain it was towards morning it was around 6 or 7 there i was in a lot of pain i was really screaming all over They said the only help they can help me uh, they inject me with painkiller they baba ni dunge sindano uchungu na they give me an ambulance to take me there so they did the first stage of administering the pain killers i know the taxi guy said that ju tumekuja na yetu kwa taxi na tume volunteer kumpeleka let us proceed to Kenyatta and i remember when we arrived in Kenyatta we found so many people at the casualty 
there was also another lady who had had a road accident as she was going to work and i remember at some point we could compete screaming like i could start screaming she could just keep quiet and look at me and then when i start screaming she could uh, when she starts uh, nikianza ku scream ananyamaza ananiangalia nikianza akianza ku scream na mimi nanyamaza na muangalia like that's how the pain was so kenyata attended to me and i remember telling them that i feel a lot of burning sensation in my stomach and the whole of my body and uh, i need to use the washroom that's when i was told that i cannot use the washroom i better ease myself from where i am i was taken for the x-ray i was still in a lot of pain i was taken to the x-ray and the mri and that is when they realized the extent of my injuries i didn't have the physical injury in your honor from outside i was not bleeding at all at all but my inside was damaged i had a very bad pelvic fracture i fractured my pelvis five times i had a very bad internal bleeding and it was hit on my left side so i was put on catheter and i was not told that i'm going to the ward and i remember telling my friends to call my big sister to tell her what has happened and uh, my plan was to hide to lie to my parents that i'm okay what was going through my mind is that and what i've always had on tv I've always heard on TV and on people talking that they were discharged at the casualty. So during an accident, that's the only memory I had that people are usually discharged at the casualty. So I knew I won't be in the hospital for long. I'm going to be discharged like immediately. But now when the doctor came and they saw how I was, That is when they told me that I might be in Kenyatta for the next three months because of the extent of my injury. Excuse me. Sorry for that. <clears throat> It's a story that I have overcome. It's a story that I've made peace with. But the memories of that day, the memories of everything, I can't help to cry, but I normally say they are not tears of sadness, they are tears of joy, of joy because I overcame that. I overcame that and that's why I'm seated here telling you my story just to inspire and give someone hope who is out there who thinks that all is over no god is not yet over with you mungu hajamalizana na wewe until you accomplish your purpose in this life you still have a long way to go and you are going to come out victorious so guys uh that is how i was admitted in kenyatta and my stay in Kenyatta officially started on 1st June 2012. And I remember the doctors talking in low tones that this is a very critical case and they don't know whether she's going to pull out alive. I was put in, in a ward and I still remember that it was level 6. I still remember the ward. And I still remember my ward mates. And what I want to tell you guys is this. Don't give hope. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Because I remember in that world we were about over 30 people that wenye nilipata no wenye walikuwa nakuja wakienda and some were losing their lives. But as I speak right now Wenye huwa tunapigiana simu 
tuna Juliana hali na unauliza fulani anaendeleaje na ako wapi we are remaining less than seven. those are the people that we know we are still alive the others they gave up they lost the battle due to the extent of the injuries the magnitude of the sickness and the traumas after the accident because the traumas after the accidents they are the terrible ones why am i speaking this if only i listened to my instincts if only i could not have indulged myself into alcoholism somehow somehow i believe that my alcoholism had so much to do with my current situation right now and i would wish that anyone who is struggling with alcohol to really work hard to really try to really to seek help to come out of it any alcohol anonymous anyone who would wish to talk about the alcohol journey i'm willing to give out the platform kindly contact me on my description i leave my contact so you can contact me contact me and i'll be ready to air your story so that you can inspire and give someone hope to tell them that it's doable it's workable so guys i was put in the world and my journey started i remember now we didn't have an option my dad had to know my mom had to know and immediately they knew but i think by the date too all both of them were in a, well, my dad came first my dad came to nairobi my late dad he came to nairobi to see me to see how things are and i remember my dad he came to see me in the ward and the picture he found my dad was devastated and immediately he left the hospital he went to mudangari to look at the vehicle that we had the accident with 